Hey everybody, and welcome back to the studio. Uh, today is beautiful, so we're going to be painting again. And I have a good idea about uh, bamboo forest, maybe in Kyoto. So I want to try to share that with you guys today. So I already have my canvas prepared with the liquid white, and the colors I'm going to use are going to show up at the bottom of the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a little bit of phthalo blue and some white. Phthalo blue and white. And for our sky today, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Normally we do the extra. Today we're going to do sunbeam, like that. Something like that. And if we want to, with a different brush, we can just go into some more white and just lighten up a few of those sunbeam areas. Ooh, that, that's working really nice right into there. Yeah. Sort of blend it all down. So we have our sunbeam sky. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into with just uh, maybe a clean brush. I'm going to go into just a really small amount of sap green, just a very, very small amount. I'm just going to start sort of pushing in some stuff. Good. And then I'm going to add in some super dark stuff. So some phthalo blue, Prussian blue, black, a lot of black, maybe even some Van Dyke brown, and then that ring. So mostly from all those dark colors it's going to be green. It should be really really dark. And I'm just going to start from the outside working in doing sort of squishy strokes like that. Maybe even a little bit more green into that thing. There we go. This one, I'm always sort of working far away, and I'm just approaching into that area I was at. And then for the bottom part, it's going to be more of that same kind of bending the brush stroke. Thank you. 
Something kind of like that. Now, my idea for this one was going to be kind of a bamboo forest. So, what we're going to do is remember that we used like the phthalo blue and the white for the sky. So that color, I'm just going to bring over in the same area of my palette, just a little bit of the phthalo green. And I'm going to start touching phthalo green into that color that we use for the sky. And I'm sort of looking for a very light version of that. Something very, very light. Sort of a mix between the sky and the pure phthalo green. And the reason for that is because the material in the sky, there are some trucks going by, the material in the sky is going to block the light from the bamboo. So the ones that are the furthest back are going to be closer in color to the sky. So just do some straight vertical line for bamboo. Normally when you're doing trees, you don't want them to be perfectly straight, but I think for some of this bamboo, it really should be. Okay. There will be a few more that are a little bit closer, so we're going to just darken up that original color. Push just a little bit harder. And then I'm going to start highlighting some of that. So I want to go into some white. A little bit of cadmium yellow. And just take a few of them. And highlight the side the sun is coming. any white at all and follow the same stroke as the light really really gently I'm gonna actually back off my brush a little bit. just like that now we're gonna start highlighting some of this stuff so for that I want to use my oval brush so that's this one here. And in my mind, this is fall. So I'm going to use a couple different fall colors in here. Uh, I'm going to start off with just some, some more of the uh, cadmium yellow and start hitting some. just going to be a 
few select branches that get hit. And with another brand, with another brush, I'm going to add the other fall color, bright red. If your red is having trouble sticking, all you have to do is add some brush thinner to it. It'll make it a lot thinner, a lot easier to apply. Too much. There we go. Here too. There's going to be some places where the light actually does get through. So even around here, it's not nearly as much. Especially over to this side of the painting, these things sort of light. Kyoto is a really nice place to visit. There are lots of really cool old shrines that exist, and they're really well taken care of. So they're really, really pretty places to go to um, and see and be in nature. But it's almost like a fabricated kind of nature, uh, some of the places, because a lot of the people will, a lot of the monks that take care of the properties and stuff, yeah. Things are planted where they're supposed to be, they're kind of arranged. It's not a, a super honest representation of nature. A lot of things in nature tend to be a little bit just more random. Other things that we can do for this, we can go into liner brush. Maybe could have done this step a little bit earlier. Go into some dark color. And just add some branches that might be in here. Some of 
them may be growing out into the right area. Don't think too much with your branches. Sometimes I feel like when you're painting, thinking too much can get you into trouble. I think the reason why is I don't think plants spend a whole lot of time thinking. I think they just like to grow. And if you're paint mixed, it's a paint mixer. Yeah. I think that's starting to look pretty good. Now we'll go back into the super dark color. And our goal now is to sort of make that lighter area even darker um, by using contrast. You can see that when I add more black things, it really starts to It really starts to make the brighter spots brighter. by making the brighter, brightest spot in the painting brighter by adding black. And that's kind of a really uh, interesting kind of thing that you can do. And then to go back and just, again, I like some of them. Here. Maybe he's still getting some light. But not too much now. Not too much. Maybe a little bit more right branches. Yeah. Kind of thought this one here would be catching some light too. Highlight some of that grass, maybe some moss. A lot of places will have like really nice moss, and it's just really, really kind of soft. Just 
tap in here, just sort of with the fan brush. And of course, like again, like random spots where holes in the tree are, you might get a little patch of light down here. Maybe even a little bit of light down here. You might even get some leaves that have fallen from the tree. So maybe some of those red leaves, they fell off the tree. And they're just sort of down on the ground now. dark area. looking pretty good, but I feel like it needs something a little bit more to really sort of sell the idea of being uh, Kyoto. So I'm going to take that dark color, make a little bit of burnt umber to it, just to make it a little bit more brown, but still obviously a black. And do a little look around, see what we like. The land is sort of sloping down like this. These are quite nice. We're going to do a Tori. Tori is basically a Japanese gate at a Shinto shrine. And our Tori gate... That. So for a Tori, the top part is for curving. Next part, ladder. It's much more painful, actually. It's connected in the middle, keep here. And then two big posts. Something like that. I'm going to work a little bit to just sort of darken that up. So. 
purpose of this quarry here is really just to add darkness to the thing. I'm definitely still looking for it to be very dark, but I'm also going to allow deep to mix. Because that's going to give like, you know, light, light effect. And so like down here, pick up a lot of brown. Maybe just be happy with it the way it is. And then we can start doing other cool things. So, I like to use blue. Phthalo blue is a really nice highlight color. Because it's, it's warm, but it's cool and dark at the same time. And maybe just... Touching... The side of the Tory gate. The entire side of it that's dark. Japan Shore is a pretty place. Really happy that I live here now. And is a really pretty place as well. Um, and, and actually, the two countries, in terms of like what you can see, are, are quite similar. Uh, both countries have two seasons. Um, obviously, Canada has a much longer winter than Japan does, but you know, Japan has. Um, Things like you know, sakuras, but Canada actually has um, apple blossoms. So really, really kind of pretty things in both countries. Then over on this side, I'm gonna highlight again, but I'm gonna highlight it more sparingly than I normally do. Places where, like, like I said, like little bits of light are just sort of poking through. Especially down here. And then we're going to go right back into that dark color again. I'm just going to clean up the feet on the Tori. So it's dark. Dark. And then light. Near the end of your painting, your, your paint might have a hard time sticking. You can go into the liquid white and add that to your stuff. Add that to your paint and it'll stick a lot better. Or you can even go into the brush cleaner. And both will work really, really fine. Brush cleaner will not change your color, uh, but the liquid white will actually lighten it up a little bit. And I think that's probably everything for this painting, actually. So let's assign this one. Brush cleaner into that red. Assign it.
All right. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope it was really fun. You can see how to do a really easy, effective uh, scene in the woods, bamboo forest, how to do light scenes. Um, so until next time, I'll see you guys around.